Hey everyone, in this video, I'll be showing you how you'll be able to turn your website into a multi-language website with the following plugin. Now, in this tutorial, I'll be using also the Elementor Page Builder plugin. So I'll be able to show you how we'll be able to edit your pages with Elementor and inside the editor, you'll be able to change the language of some elements. For example, if we'll head over to this heading, you'll be able to see we have our normal heading and we have our heading over here in our different language. And if that is not enough, we'll only need a few plugins for that. We only only need Elementor. In this case, I also have the Elementor Pro plugin. But other than that, you'll need only the following multi language for WordPress and the following for Elementor Lite and also the following for Elementor Pro if you wish to upgrade, which I would highly recommend you to do so. All the links for these plugins would be down in the description of this video. But other than that, let's dive right in. So let's start with the first thing. Let's add our first language in our website. So what you want to do after you have installed Falang, as you can see here, we'll be able to see that with the designation of two flags, as you can see here, specifically here, it's of Great Britain and we have the German flag over here. And in the middle, we have this little F for Falang. So to add your language, what you want to do is navigate to languages. And over here, you'll be able to see that my website is by default on English. As you'll be able to see here, we have our flag, we have our name, low local English US code English and as default it will be designated with this star you can always change that depending on the language that you want to choose on your website but just so you know the default language would be designated with the star we have posts designated for this language currently I don't have any posts and we'll be able to see we can edit this language let's add our new language by clicking this button right over here add new language and in my case I will add the French language as we can see here we have the option to choose a language so you want to open that drop down and as you can see here we have a lot of languages over here so i'll scroll until i'll see the french language as you can see here we have the french as we see here and then we'll be able to see that once I chose the French language or any other language of my choice, we'll be able to see here that the full name has been already pre-filled for me, local, hope I'm pronouncing it correctly, WordPress local for the language, for example, English US, the .mo file will be installed automatically for this language. We have SEF language code, which would be displayed on the URL slug, as we can see here. We have also the option to change the text direction if your language, for example, is from right to left. By, by default it would be left to right and we'll be able to see here we have the option to choose the flag that we want to it is corresponding to the french flag and we have a lot more flags as we can see here currently it's not wide loading for me but for example let's choose the denmark flag and as you can see here now it shows i'll just change it really quick to the french let's go back to our french flag as we can see here france and then if you want to you can also upload a custom flag as we can see here upload image or remove custom flag if you have uploaded a different flag of your choice now these flags you can also head over to flat icon and then just download it from there and as you can see here i have a lot of options over here for example you can choose this one this one this one or any of your choice just make sure that for example you choose let's say this one you would make sure that you would choose the png but i would recommend you to choose the highest resolution you can get it will be 512 pixels so we will head over with this one just click png and it would download it to your PC or Mac. And once you're done setting up your language of your choice, just click the add new language. And as we can see here, our new language is being added just beneath our English language. And we can see here the order is two and then the code French and then the default, as we can see here, the star is appearing and disappearing depending on our choice. If we want to choose that, we have this little tooltip which tells us select as default language. And we can see here there is no post assigned to it and we can also edit that. Now, the next thing that I wanted to show you here is how to set up a menu and here what's cool about this plugin that you don't have to create another menu you can simply translate it from the following plugin so let me show you that right now in order to do so we'll head over to our appearance and then we'll head over to menus over here in our menus we can see here that i have already a pre-made menu as we can see here home our bread our story workshops and contact us so if you want to add the language switcher all you have to do is open the screen options then enable the language switcher and it will be popping up right over here so close the screen options and let's head over to our language switcher and over here just click the languages and then add to menu now it will add to your menu but you would want to open that first by default it would be displaying language names but usually i would just suggest you to head over with displaying flags and hide the current language and also disable the language names and i think that's pretty much it for this now the reason that i chose these options because usually on websites what i love to see is what other languages 
languages this website can be displayed in. And this is why I'm choosing this. Other than that, you just want to save the menu as we can see here, save menu, and then you're good to go. It will be displaying on your front end of your website. Once that is done, the other question that you might be asking, okay, fine, but I've seen in other plugins that I do need to create a separate menu for the language that I want to switch to. Is that the case over here? As I said before, no, that's not the case because in this plugin, it works completely differently. You just need to translate those separate items and then you're pretty much good to go with your menu. So in order to do so, head over to Falang and then head over to translate menus. And then over here, you'll be able to see that we have this table. We can see here the title of the page. We have here the type of the post. In this case, it is a page and we can see here the languages is custom because it will display here the type depending on whether it's a page or whether it's a custom item. We can see here we have our language flag over here and we have the contact us home our bread, our story, workshops and language. As you can see here, when I hover each of these items, I can edit or delete each one of them. For example, let's say I want to translate the home page. So what I want to do is head over and click edit. And then over here, I would want to translate the name of the item. In this case, it would be home. So in French, it would be this. As you can see here, we have two buttons over here. We have the option to copy what we have here and we'll copy that home as it is to here. Or we can choose a translation service to enable so it will translate that. As we can see here now, it is translated. So here the process is really simple. What you have to do is click here, publish this published switcher and then also save over here. And then that's pretty much all you have to do. As we can see here now, it will redirect us back to our translated menus. We have a check mark over here. Once the item is being translated to the language that you want to, it will be right over here. It will be displaying what is actually being translated to. And we can see here that all the other items have this little gray circle over here that will designate that it is not yet translated in the language of your choice. Currently, right now, it is in French. So you'll be able to see it right now. When you have more languages, there will be more columns for this over here. Once we're done with our menus, the next thing I want to show you is how to edit a page with Elementor and you don't have to create another page for it on your website. You can literally translate everything inside the page that you edit with Elementor. That way, you don't have to bloat your website with other pages. So let's do that right now. So head over to pages and then over here, I'll head over and edit the homepage. But before that, I wanted to show you here that we have here the translations column over here. I have the French translations as we can see here. Currently, right now, it is not being translated. As we can see here, it's kind of reminding us of what we just saw. We see here the gray circle over here. And once it is translated, it will have this green check mark. The other thing here, we have the globe over here with the asterisk sign visible for all languages as we can see here. So let's edit our homepage over here, edit with Elementor. Now, currently we're using Falang and Falang Elementor Lite plugin as we just saw in the beginning of this tutorial. So just a quick note here is that in the free version of the Elementor Lite with Falang, you can only translate buttons, accordions, text editors, and headings as we will be able to see right in a minute. But if you want to add more widgets with Falang, it would be in a pro version and a link to the pro version would be down in the description of this video. But other than that, all the pro widgets of Elementor, you'll be able to see all of these ones. You can see here we have alert, counter, divider, icon, HTML, star rating, tabs, and so forth. So these ones are the light version widgets and these ones are the, whoops, these ones are the pro version widgets. So back to the edit page. Let's head over and edit our heading. So we have the art of baking. So I will just click and edit the heading over here. And once you edit this heading, you'll be able to see that everything is changing correctly in Elementor. Only this time, you'll be able to see that we have our heading with our designated flag for the language that we want to translate. So you can open that up and we'll be able to see here that it is staying in the same way as we used to see that. So we can see here we have the title with French and we have the link if we want to link our title to something in our website. So you'll be able to translate it over here. I will do that right now. This is the title in the French language. I will be able to see that when I switch between languages. Currently, you won't see it in the editor. This is a very important note here. So you'll be able to add here or edit every title or every button of your choice. Just make sure that you save your changes so you'll be able to see them in the language that you want to. In this case, you will have to click the publish button and then you're good to go. The same thing goes if we'll head over to our text over here. We'll be able to see here we have our text editor and if we'll scroll a little bit down here, we'll be able to see our text editor over here. And the same thing goes over here. You can edit your text over here. Now, you might be able to notice here that we 
we have our translate option button over here. This will be only in the pro version. So again, I would highly recommend you if you're going to build a website in multiple languages and you just don't want to hustle. So head over, upgrade to the pro version, and then you'll be able to access all the features inside the pro version. With that out of the way, I don't want to translate the lorem ipsum over here. Let's translate just a few more titles. For example, let's head over and translate welcome. Let's exit that to Benson's Bakery. So I just went over and translated a few more headings. I translated this heading over here and these two headings. So I'm done editing them. So I just wanted to preview them together with you. So I'll just click the eye icon over here and then I just want to see the page. So it will be in the English language because this is the default language of my website. Let's wait it to load completely. Now we're good. As I said before, we can see here our flag over here in the French language. So I'll click that. We can see also the little animation over here with the little border on the bottom. So I'll just click that and we'll be able to see that it switches in the same page, the language, and we'll be able to see right over here. The slug also is changing over here. It translated it from French. So I just want to disable that and let's refresh. And as we can see here, it is translated beautifully. As we can see here now, it is in French. This one is also in French and this one is also in French. Now, what you might have not noticed, the homepage is also translated in French and the flag is also appearing here as English if we want to switch from French to English. And as you might be able to see here, this is quite cool, I must say, because you can translate all the text or all the items that you want to inside the Elementor page builder without jumping between any other pages of different languages. We've edited a page together with Elementor, but let's say you want to change also the slug of different pages on your website so it won't display them in English. So let's say you want to display them also in French or any other language of your choice. So we'll do that together right now. In this case, what you want to do is head over to your WP admin dashboard. So I'll open that up over here in a new tab. I'll close that one up because that one was the preview page. So what you want to do is head over to Falang and then head over to translate posts. And then over here, you'll be able to see here we have all of our pages, but usually on your website, you will have also here some posts. So as we can see, we have post hello world. So you want to filter that over here by pages. So you just choose pages and then just click filter. As we can see here, now it's all pages. So let's say I want to translate our bread page as we can see that over here. And the same thing would be here. Once you're done with it, it will display in a check mark with a green background. So we'll head over and click edit. And then we'll be able to see here the similar interface as we've seen before. We can see here the source and we can see here the target. In this case, it would be in French and we can see here the title, the slug, the excerpt if we want to. In this case, we would just translate the title and the slug. As we can see here, we have also these buttons, but I would just head over and translate that. But before that, I just wanted to show you the actual slug of the page. So I'll open my pages in a new tab and then I'll open up our bread page. So let's view our page over here, our bread. And as we can see here, it is in English because my website default language of English. So we can see here our bread. So let's translate that to French by going to translate posts and we'll head over here and translate the title and the slug to French. As we can see here, I've pasted the translation. I translated it in a Google Translate. So please, if you speak French, I don't actually know French. I just wanted to show you the other options that you can actually translate your website into a different language. So once you're done that, head over, enable this switcher over here, publish, and then click save and close or just save. Once the page is refreshed, let's head over to our bread page and then let's also click refresh and then let's switch it to the French language by clicking the flag icon over here. And as we'll be able to see here, it is also in the French language, the slug over here. Now it will currently display in a 404 page because I haven't translated the page actually. As we'll be able to see here, we have the French slug over here and then the our bread slug also being translated over here. The other things that I wanted to show you here is how you'll be able to translate translate posts on your website using Falang and the option to translate strings depending on your theme on your website. And also I want to go briefly on the options that you have inside the plugin itself. So let's do all that right now. So in this case, I will close this page and we'll head over back to our translation post over here. So you just want to save and close. In this case, this is what I will do. And that would throw me back to translate posts. In this case, I have only one post, which now is not displaying because it is 
is filtered by page. I'll choose posts over here and then I'll filter it. Now we can see here the hello world. These posts and the way that you edit them would be similar to all the posts that you have on your website. As we can see here, we have type posts and again, we have our gray circle. So click edit and now you'll be able to see that the same interface is displaying only this time. The difference is between the pages and the posts that you can actually add it to content over here and just translate it over here because it is a post, it is not a page. So the same process would be applied. The title, the slug and the content would be translated over here. And once you're done, just click save or save and close. The other thing that I wanted to show you here is the strings. So you will head over to following and then translate strings. Currently, I have only these strings and these are the default strings of WordPress. So if you have any other strings that you have to translate for your theme, they will be visible over here. And if they're not, head over to the view all groups and then it will be right over here. You will just choose it and then you filter by what you need depending on your theme. The other thing that I want to go over with you is the settings. So head over to settings under the following. Now we have the version over here, show slug for main language. If you want to, you can enable it and also the auto detect language if you want to. This is a feature that some of you might need. And also the flag sizes, if you want to, you can change them. By default, it's 16 by 11. And translation service, if you want to enable a translation service, you can check that. But do make sure that you have the translation API. As we can see here, we're going to translate API key, Microsoft Azure, and the Lingvanex API key. I hope I pronounced that correctly. And if you want to choose the service, you just open that drop down over here and you just choose the service that you want to. All these three fields are for the API keys. Now the association, if you want to enable association for pages only, this will be applied over here. And as we can see here, we have also the option to use Ajax in front end. So to add a language parameter to Ajax queries, it will be using jQuery. Just make sure that you know what you're doing here. Now keep paragraph tags in the classic block and the classic editor. As you can see here, stop removing the P element of the HTML and break tags in the classic editor and show them in the text tab. Now, the next thing we have here, the debug admin, if we want to enable that view debug info in the admin section, and also the option to delete translations on uninstall. If you want to enable that, head over, enable that. And that's pretty much it for this general settings. Now we have also the translate options. As we can see here, we have the post type for the translation. Currently, it is enabled by default, the posts, pages, navigation menu items, categories, and tags. If you need to translate any other post types, it will be visible right over here. And if you don't find something here that you need, simply leave a comment down below and I will try to help in the best way that I can. The other thing here, we have our license. So when you purchase the license for the Elementor editor, the theme, the DV, it will be going right over here. And also the information, if you need any other support, it will be right in this website. The other thing that I haven't showed you here is the plugins right over here. I have the filing for Elementor Pro. When I activate that, I will have more options inside the editor page as we've seen before. I just showed you the title and the text editor. But once you enable the license, you'll have more options to more widgets as we've just seen in this tutorial. But other than that, I really hope this tutorial helped you. And if it did, I'd be really glad to if you leave a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to my channel so you won't miss any tutorial that I post on any other cool plugins, integrations on WordPress, Elementor, and WooCommerce. And as always, I'll be seeing you in the next one.